How solid is the evidence that it was the Russians? It's very solid. It's uh, indeed overwhelming. We do know this. The Russians offered help. The campaign accepted help. The Russians gave help, and the president made full use of that help. He was working on a deal that would require doing away with sanctions for him to make money in Russia. That is a real problem. And that is a total fraud and a liar, Adam Schiff. And he should be, quite frankly, thrown out of politics. However, believe it or not, his political clout seems to be on the rise. He could very well be the next United States senator from California. He's the favorite at this point. Uh, even though the Durham report exposed him and many others as total frauds, however, John Durham did these folks a favor. And this is a big problem of this report. It is obscured. The language is designed to throw water on the explosive allegations that are here, the explosive findings that are here. For instance, take a look at this, please. Uh, this is at the very end of the report, page 302. I know a lot of words here, okay? Throughout the duration of Crossfire Hurricane, facts and circumstances that were inconsistent with the premise that Trump and or persons associated with the Trump campaign were involved in a collusive or conspiratorial relationship with the Russian government were ignored or simply assessed away. Now that lacks some punch. This is better. Facts were ignored that pointed to Trump's innocence, but they write it in a way that obscures that. And it's done to, well, they don't want this to help Trump. It should have come out two years ago. And here's something else a bit more direct at the end of the report. FBI leaders asserted they would prevent Trump from becoming president. This is kind of amazing, isn't it? I mean, the FBI, the FBI ignored facts. Did you hear that part? They ignored facts. That is a malicious, I'm, it's a criminal investigation. You can't use our government. We gave them that stuff. They can't ignore facts, but they did. They did. And this report, the Durham report, written in such a way that guys like Chuck Todd can say this. I mean, this is what they were looking for, gobbledygook. And they got gobbledygook. Take a look. If you only consume media on the right, you might be excused for thinking this week's 306-page Durham report on the Russian inquiry was a bombshell and damning, and that the investigation was an abomination and a soft coup. But special counsel John Durham's actual sharpest conclusions after a four-year investigation were that the FBI suffered from confirmation bias and, quote, discounted or willfully ignored material information that countered the narrative of collusion between Donald Trump and Russia. The report recommended no wholesale changes to FBI rules for regulations or wiretaps, and Durham did not send a single person to jail, even though former President Trump once predicted that Durham would uncover the crime of the century. Oh, you see, Trump's wrong again. Oh, da, 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 da. Facts were ignored that pointed to Trump's innocence, and they knew it right off the bat. Yet... Shifty Schiff paraded on Sunday shows. He did something like uh, 35 appearances. So almost a third of the time, Shifty Schiff was on TV talking about 35 appearances on the Sunday shows over a year and a half period, talking about this stuff, which was not true. The Pulitzer Prizes have already been awarded and they're not going to be rescinded. The New York Times, the Washington Post, they got Pulitzer Prize for writing down the malicious leaks that came out of the FBI. And the Pulitzer Committee, my goodness gracious, what a bunch of... Pun they should keep that trophy. Just get rid of it. Listen to these people. Most journalists consider the work they do to be a calling, one so important that the Founding Fathers protected the very existence of the press in the U.S. Constitution. Well, they also talked about freedom of religion. They also talked about freedom of speech of citizens' right to speak. Uh, let's see, freedom to assemble peaceably. It's not just the press. They always make it all about themselves. Anyway, they have a big ceremony and they hand out the trophies and the incredibly pompous president of Columbia University gets things started. The citation for the Pulitzer Prize in journalism for national reporting for a distinguished example of reporting on national affairs awarded to staffs of the New York Times and the Washington Post for deeply sourced, relentlessly reported coverage in the public interest that dramatically furthered the nation's understanding of Russia interference 
in the 2016 election and its connections to the Trump campaign, the president-elect's transition team, and his eventual administration. Congratulations to the New York Times and the Washington Post. And look at them. They dramatically furthered a lie. They were used. Willing, willing co-conspirators, I believe. And look at them getting their trophies, getting their pictures, the accolades, right? They love it. And they still have those silly trophies. Uh, when is, there, is this going to be addressed? Is this going to be fixed? It really should be. Uh, I don't think it will. The media yesterday, I mean, the Sunday shows, this is what they feasted on for two years. No mention of Schiff, no mention of the Durham report, nothing like it never happened. Face the nation, the same deal. No mention of any of this stuff. They were found out, they were exposed. They're the last people, I guess, who are going to come forward. I already mentioned how uh, Meet the Press handled it. This is a big problem, though. I mean, the New York Times, there's no mm, deterrence. There's been no deterrence. You have to embarrass some people who are this wrong for that long. They're going to do it again. I mean, they have paid absolutely no price. And the same goes for the FBI. You know, the criminal justice system, you have to have punishment. You have to have rehabilitation. And you have to have deterrence. Nobody has been deterred at the FBI from trying this stuff again, I do believe. All right. Take a look at this, our nasty, nasty president in Hiroshima. Are Republicans negotiating in good faith? Okay, guys. It goes in stages. Mr. President. I've been in these negotiations before. Mr. President. Started off. Shush up, okay? Shush up, okay? Shut up. He once threatened to fire anybody on his White House staff who treated anybody with any bit of disrespect, damn it. Remember that? Uh, he Today, he falsely said that his son, Bo, died in Iraq. That's kind of stolen hour. Why bring Bo into it? Bo was a great guy, but he died in Delaware, not in Iraq. Um, and I'm reminded, he's such a user. This man exploits death. He's been doing it, quite frankly. That's what, happened. That's what made him a star way back in the 1970s. Hate to say it, but he said much the same thing. Look at how we use death during COVID. My fellow Americans... There are moments in our history so grim, so heartrending, that they're forever fixed in each of our hearts, a shared grief. And that was at 100,000 deaths. He's running for president, okay? So he wants to use this issue. Or maybe you think, okay, he's, he's really mourning these losses. What happened at 200,000? We are under attack, as I said earlier. 200,000 plus have died. 50,000 a day are getting the virus. 1,000 a day thereabouts are dying. This is a national emergency. All right, really fired up. Those numbers, by the way, inflated, as you know by now, right? They were inflated every step of the way. Uh, at 300,000. Today, our nation passed a grim milestone. 300,000 deaths to do this COVID virus. My heart goes out to each of you in this dark winter of the pandemic. All right, now he's about to become president and he's really gonna go into overdrive. I mean, this is the funeral director of the United States of America. Remember the empathizer, the consoler in chief. Between sundown and dusk, let us shine the lights in the darkness along the sacred pool of reflection. Remember all whom we lost between sundown and dusk, the sacred pool of reflection. Wow, I never heard it called quite that. Anyway, then he becomes president, 500,000 COVID deaths, remember, greatly uh, in enhanced. And look at all those candles, and here they come with the, yeah, the funeral director in chief. Because, now look, it's on his watch now. Watch what happens at 600,000 deaths. Are there candles? No, there's a tweet. There's a tweet. That's all it was, a tweet. I know that black hole, blah, 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 blah. A tweet. At 700,000, uh, the tweet was somewhat mocked. So they came out with a presidential statement. We must not become numb to the sorrow. But we can, we can blow it off. No more ceremony. At 800,000 deaths, this is where Joe's true colors, you see it all. When you, when you put it all together, this is who he is. 
President Biden on 800,000 coronavirus deaths. Um, if you have a statement on your responsibility, and why haven't you uh, asked China to do more to be transparent on the origins? Literally laughing it off. 800,000 deaths. What happened? What happened at 400,000 deaths? What happened, right? Can I see the difference? 400,000 versus 800,000. It's on his watch, and uh, he's just going to laugh it off. This is a bad president and a bad man.